Hey guys, welcome back to Heavy Metal Horizons. So, ham radio can be a very expensive hobby. And I think when you first get into it, it can be a very daunting task to choose a first radio and not feel like you're maybe wasting a lot of money. So I got my ham license back in 2022, and I've spent a lot of time messing around with you know these affordable handheld VHF radios. And the one that has really stood out to me as the best radio for a new ham or someone's first radio to get is this one right here, which is the Radtel RT470. I think this is a great first ham radio, probably the best one, all things considered, certainly for the money. But I think it is also a really good radio for emergency comms, like for all you guys who are wringing your hands together waiting for the apocalypse. So in this video, I'm going to explain why I think this is the best radio compared to all the other affordable VHF radios out there, why this is the best one for a new ham, and also the emergency comms side of things. But I'm also going to show you how to actually use this radio with some of the most popular or most useful features like scanning, listening to aircraft bands, the NOAA weather channels, and also how to use it on a repeater, and also how to switch between channel mode and VFO or frequency mode. So let's go ahead and get right into this. But of course, real quick, if you guys enjoy videos like this, we do cars, aviation, and radio here on Heavy Metal Horizons. If you like that stuff and you have not already subscribed, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, now the first thing I want to say up front is to be clear, this is the RT470 by Radtel, it's not the 470X or the 470L. Those are different radios, and just the basic RT470 is the one I'm recommending. Now, this radio costs about $50, and when you get it for 50 bucks, you get the radio like this. Of course, you get like a charging, like a dock, a charging dock for it, and a charger and a cable, and that kind of stuff. Uh, if you want to spend a little bit more money, you can get a kit that includes a better antenna and also a hand mic which has the speaker built in that usually goes for like 80 85 dollars like on amazon if you just want one of these things like maybe the better antenna you can get this radio and then you can buy just the the antenna as a standalone item and it's it's pretty inexpensive you can get all this stuff on amazon or on aliexpress You'll save a little bit of money on AliExpress, but of course it's going to take a little bit longer to get to you. And I don't care where you buy it. This is not a sponsored video. Radtel is not, you know, they didn't give me the radio. I have no relationship with the company. Nothing like that. But here is why I'm recommending this radio. For 50 bucks, you are getting fantastic coverage of the VHF and UHF bands. They're advertising this as a six band radio. It's really four bands because two of those bands that they're counting are not bands that you can transmit on. And I'll get into more about that in, in a few minutes. But for VHF and UHF stuff, this radio has excellent coverage. Also, this is a relatively high-powered radio, you know, for a handheld radio. It's advertised at 10 watts, and people have, have tested this. And in some cases, depending on the band and the frequency you're on, it's actually higher than 10 watts. Few people have tested it at being like, you know, 11 point something uh, in the best case scenario. So compared to a lot of other radios, you're getting maybe double the power output. Also, this radio has a really big battery. It's a 3800 milliamp hour battery. And one of the best things about this is the battery has a USB-C, a USB-C charging port on it. So you can charge this radio in the dock that they send to you. You can also just charge it off of a regular USB plug, just plugging it into the battery. The other thing about that is the plug goes in the battery, not the radio. So you can have the battery disconnected from the radio and be charging it, or you can have a battery here. You can get a second battery that you keep on the charger and then have one battery on the radio, right? So you can, you can have multiple batteries charging without buying an extra charger because you're just using the USB cable. And you can use the radio while it is charging. I like to use this radio in my car a lot, and so I just have a little cigarette lighter USB port that plugs, you know, right into the bottom of the battery here, and I have the radio on or I have it off, and it's just charging it all the time, and it works great. And the best thing is, is you don't even need a special, like, separate car charger. You know, those, 
cigarette lighter USB chargers you can get for like two dollars or something. Okay now the next thing that makes this a great radio is the scanning ability on here and I'll, I'll give you an example of this later in the video but a lot of these you know like the bow fangs are notorious for this a lot of these less expensive VHF radios they have a very slow scanning function on them and it, and it kind of like click 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 you know it'll click through and it'll take a really long time depending on how your frequency step is set. This, uh, it's very easy to scan and also the scanning is fast. So you combine the fast scanning with this really great frequency range coverage and you just have that alone just makes this a really good scanner even if you're not planning on talking to anybody on it. Okay, now the other thing which, I mean, this is important obviously, but the sound quality on this radio is excellent. The built-in speaker is very good and if you're getting one of these uh, separate mic and speaker uh, handheld units here, this just plugs into the side here and this is a standard like a Kenwood dual pin plug that plugs right in there and even the speaker in the, uh, the handheld mic is really good too. So just overall great sound quality. Okay now that relates to the next point I want to make uh, about the sound quality. This radio you can listen to aircraft right it has you know the AM VHF AM reception in the air band and for whatever reason a lot of the other radios that have that feature the AM reception is terrible and it's it's you can hear it and like if you're a pilot and you know the phraseology and what to listen for you can still understand what's coming across the radio but the reception I mean it's very just like raw raw you know very garbled it just sounds pretty bad this radio is actually very very good on the AM airband reception. It's much much easier compared to those other radios to listen to those aircraft frequencies. Now I'm a private pilot and something I love to use this radio for is to listen to the ATIS which is like the weather reporting and, and what runways the airport's using all that information that gets broadcasted on a aircraft frequency and I like to listen to that when I'm driving to the airport so I know what to expect you know when I get to the airport as far as conditions and everything and this radio picks it up really really well and if I have the upgraded antenna installed even from my apartment which is not that close to the airport I can listen to the tower frequency so I can hear you know all the traffic going in and out of the airport. Tower 417 Charlie Bravo Van Nuys Tower Blood Basin right crosswind wind 1106 runway 16 right quick thanks. Tower 7 Charlie Bravo do you want to talk to SoCal? Yes, please. Charlie Bravo. Charlie Bravo, destination and request to altitude. Okay, go ahead. It's 3500. Charlie Bravo. Charlie Bravo, squad 0247. 477, Charlie Bravo. The last thing I want to mention about uh, the airband stuff is you can get a super cool uh, set of adapter cables that plugs right in here. And this is an adapter cable for the general aviation dual plug uh, setup for an aviation headset. So you can put your headset on, you can be listening to this stuff. Maybe if you're a student pilot and you want to practice responding to your radio calls or something like that. Now I should have said this earlier but keep in mind the airband is reception only. You cannot transmit on the airband through this radio. Obviously there are handheld radios where you can do that but they're kind of aircraft specific you know much more expensive radios and that was part of the reason why I said earlier I don't count these two other bands in the overall you know it's not a six band radio because one of those bands is the aircraft band which you can only receive on same thing this radio also has a, just a standard FM broadcast radio uh, in it so they're counting that as another band too and again I'm not going to count that but but the bands that you can receive and transmit on that's kind of like four VHF and UHF bands. Okay so the rest of it is this radio just has all the other little features that are really cool to have on a radio. I mean it has a flashlight and of course you can talk uh, through repeaters on this radio so all of the all of the features that you would want in a ham radio you know handheld ham radio this radio has. Okay so I'm going to show you how to use some of those features but before we go on, let me just take a second here. Why would this be a great emergency radio? Well, there's a few reasons. One is, like I mentioned earlier, it's got this really wide coverage. You can talk on a lot of different frequencies with this radio. And the wider 
you know, wider amount or the more frequencies you can talk on in an emergency, the better chance you will have of reaching someone. Also, because it's a higher power handheld radio, again, that gets your signal out further, better chance of reaching someone. The other thing is the battery life is fantastic on this radio. I have, you know, been uh, not paying attention, like I've had this in my car and I leave the radio on and I'll come back to it like a day later or two days later and it's been on the whole time and it's barely run the battery down at all. So the standby ability of this radio is really, really good. Great battery life. Also being able to listen to the air band, listen to the the air traffic, helicopters, obviously the planes going in and out of the local airports, all of that stuff gives you better situational awareness in an emergency. And remember, you wanna be prepared for an emergency, you wanna be prepared for the worst case scenario, but you probably don't wanna spend more than you need to on a radio that hopefully you'll never have to actually use in an emergency. And so for 50 bucks, or let's say you you know, you get the big antenna and the extra mic and everything, you really splurge and you spend $85 on it. That's a really, really good value for peace of mind for a good radio to have in an emergency. And if you never end up using it, fine, you never spent that much money on it. Okay guys, so now let me show you how to actually use some of these features. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a close-up view so you can really see how I'm doing this. Okay, so when we power the radio on, Power's up, and we've it's, it's basically like a dual watch radio, so we've got the top and the bottom there. And if you see, there's a little number right there at 001, and then on the bottom here, we've got VFO. So 001, that means the top here is on channel mode, and the bottom is on VFO or frequency mode. Now, one thing to understand about the radio is there's no, like, band switch or anything like that. So I'm on the bottom one. You just type in whatever, fre whatever frequency you want, and if the radio can receive it, it'll go right there. So we're on 127.55. It automatically switches to AM reception because that's the air band. But we can go to like 145.230. Now it switches, and we're in uh, you know a VHF 2-meter ham band. And same thing. You can go to like 220, uh, 245. And it'll go there. And if you, if you try to input a frequency that the radio can't receive, it just won't let you input it. I mean, it'll give you like an error. Now, if you want to switch between the top or the bottom, uh, just this little home button, which has the back arrow, uh, the back arrow and the little home icon, just switch that here. It makes a little nice little noise. So you can see it switches, you know, which one is your main channel. And the other thing is if you want to switch between channel mode or VFO mode, uh, all you have to do is just hold down the home button. Frequency mode. And you can hear it switch. It says frequency mode. Or you hold it again. Channel mode. Channel mode, right? So it goes back and forth. So you quick press it to go, you know, toggle between the top and the bottom. Or hold it. To go between channel mode and frequency mode. Now we're on the bottom band here. It says main there. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, anyway, we want to scan, right? I mean, scanning is really, really useful. So there's just a nice quick button. The second one down right here, which has like a little arrow and the asterisk, just hold that down. Scanning begin. Scanning begin, okay? And it starts scanning through. And right now it's going up. If you want to go down, if you want to scan down, just press the down arrow while it's scanning, and now it's going down. You can go back up, and if you want to stop scanning, let's say you're not finding anything, you want to stop scanning, just hit the, the scan button again. Again, it's the asterisk, you just hold that down. Now, one thing on the radio that's pretty important is these side buttons. Of course, this big one here is your push to talk button. But there are these two kind of multifunction side buttons, and you can assign what you want those buttons to do. And, and that opens up a lot of uh, sort of convenient features within the radio. So we go to the left uh, upper corner button here, which is basically your, your menu button. Menu. Okay. And then we, uh, we start scanning through with up and down arrows. And I'm going to go up here, uh, PF2 and... 
PF2 long press and then PF3 uh, and then there's a top key. There's actually a button, the button, the orange one on the top here. That's another one you can assign. But let's take a look at PF2, which is this one right here. And right now, that is on the NOAA weather channels. So I'll escape from this. Now to get to the NOAA weather channels, we just hit that once, that key. And we hit that again, okay, and that shuts it off. So you can use that to activate the, the NOAA weather channels or turn on the flashlight, or you can have it set up to activate the, uh, the FM broadcast radio. And I think right now, let's see if I, if I hold it down. Yeah. So the way I have it set up right now is I hit it once and it takes me to my NOAA weather channels. And if I hold it down, it activates the, uh, the FM broadcast radio. The soothing sounds of classical music. And again, to turn off what you just turned on, use the same button again. So I'll hold it down and it goes back to my ham radio. Now, the other thing I really wanna show you guys is how to, uh, to set up a repeater on this. So we're gonna be uh, you know, we're on the, the bottom channel here on frequency mode, and I'm going to go to 1-1-4-7-7-3-5. One, one, seven, seven, which is uh, a local repeater here that I should be able to reach from my apartment here. And there are some people online, I think, complaining about that it's hard to set up for a repeater, but what they were trying to do is use sort of the dual watch mode where you have your input frequency on the top and your output frequency on the bottom. That's not the way to do it, really. Uh, the, the way to set up a repeater is you've got your, your repeater frequency. Go into Menu, and we go to the Repeater section, which is around um, 25, 26. Now, we have our repeater offset, and this is the correct number here, 0. Point. So the offset is set. The other thing we need to set is the repeater shift. Are we going, is it, you know, plus 0.6 or negative 0.6? So we go into this. So negative or positive. I know it happens to be negative on this repeater. Confirm. Confirm, okay. So once we've set up the repeater offset, which is, you know, again, the repeater offset is just means that we're, we're monitoring 147735, and when we transmit, it offsets it to a different frequency. So we've got the offset, set up uh, and then it's going to be a negative offset and the last thing we need to do is set our, our PL tone which is going to be in uh, number six in the menu which is T CTSS. Let's get back to that. Right now it's off so we hit OK and then we can select uh, starting at 67 and this is 100. Whoops. Right there got that. Now, check this out. Don't think there's anybody on there, but we can, we should be able to key up the, uh, the repeater here. Let's try this. Okay. Okay. So that's working. And you see when I, when I press transmit, it, it does the negative 600. So we're going from 147735 to 147135. And you can hear the tail on the repeater there. So that's the proper way to use the repeater function. And honestly, that's, that's pretty standard as far as these handheld ham radios go. Okay, guys, so I hope all of that was helpful. Uh, yes, there are better handheld ham radios, of course, but they're going to be considerably more expensive. I think this is a really good radio. It's got a lot of great features. The features that it has, it does all of those things very well. And again, $50 you know, 50 to 90, that's the range, depending on the extra stuff you get with it. This radio is, is just a really great bang for your buck. And that's really why I think it is a great first radio for a new ham. Okay, but do you think I'm wrong? Is there a radio I'm not considering when I'm thinking about this one? Is this missing features that you think it should have in a first radio for a new ham? What do you guys think? 
let me know down in the comment section below. Okay, guys, thanks a ton for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to have links for everything I was talking about down in the video description below. And guys, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you soon.